Hello ladies and gents and uh, welcome to another repair video. Today we're going to be looking at this Nintendo Switch which has been sent in and apparently this Nintendo Switch works but it's got a broken SD connector. So basically what that means is that the connector that connects the SD card module to the motherboard is likely damaged and needs replacing. It's a fairly common issue actually. I don't think I've done a video on this in the past though. But it's a fairly common issue on the original Nintendo Switches on the HAC models. The SD card connector had a tendency to lift off the board. So basically it would lift off the board as you're pushing the SD card in and out. I'm not sure why, maybe it's a little bit loose inside there. But it lifts off the board and sometimes it takes one of the traces with it. So what we have to do is take the old connector off put a new one on but also sometimes run some jumper wires to be able to fix it. So we're going to take a look, we're going to see what we can do, hopefully get this fixed. But if you are new to the channel and you enjoy this type of content, then be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified whenever I release a video. If you find these videos useful in any way, then I've got a Patreon link in the video description if you want to support me. You can also support me through direct donations. You can become a channel member here on YouTube. Or you can head over to Twitch, link your Amazon Prime account to Twitch and subscribe for free. And that way you get some benefits such as early access to videos. And I get a little bit of a kickback every month. It does help out the channel a lot. It allows me to buy new equipment and to continue making videos. So with that being said, let's get into this repair, shall we? Right we are then, so the first thing I'm going to do is just turn it on, hopefully it's got some charge in it and I haven't got to wait. It's always annoying when we end up with a dead battery. There we go. Beautiful, 66% battery, that's excellent, it means I haven't got to worry about charging it. Which is fine, looks like we've got Rayman Legends in here. So let's first of all take that out. Get rid of that. Um, what I'm going to do... Uh, okay, so we've got an SD card in there. I was going to get one of my own. So we've got a 32 gigabyte Kingston uh, Canvas Select Plus. Huh. Not sure if that one's going to be sufficient. I don't know if it's class 10 or not. So it's not reading anything on the SD card. So I'm not sure if that's class 10, so I'm going to double check and make sure that it's got the correct SD card in there. So I've got here one of my own Nintendo Switches. Um, this has got an official Nintendo Switch SD card in there. I'll just make sure that it's nothing to do with the actual SD card. It doesn't appear to be, it's not loading up anything. So usually what would happen when we put a new SD card in is it would ask us to reboot and then it would ask us to format it if it's not the correct SD card for that switch. So obviously because this has came out of my own switch, it basically should ask to reboot. Let's just have a look here. So I'll just show you what's meant to happen. So we'll turn on this Nintendo switch. This is one of my own, which I fixed recently. And it's dead. All right, never mind. It's fine. So I'll just stick that SD card back in there. So it's not going to be the SD card which is causing the primary issue. So what we need to do is we need to take it apart and we need to try and figure out what's going on. I'm assuming that it's going to be that the SD card connector is lifted off the board. But it could just be that it's been damaged. Someone could have been inside and damaged it. Generally, if the console hasn't been opened, then it would be the fact that it's been lifted off the board. But obviously... If we don't know the history, then unfortunately we can't know for sure until we get inside. So I'll just remove those screws there. I'll likely fast forward through this in the video editing. So it's a little bit boring getting inside. So I'll fast forward through this. And we'll see you all on the other side. So one thing I am going to do before I actually do that is I just want to make sure a few more things work. So... I want to make sure it charges, and I also want to make sure that it's going to connect to some Joy-Cons as well. Just to give it that initial test, so as then when I actually come to putting it back together, I know that nothing is wrong with it, or nothing should be wrong with it when I put it back together. So, Joy-Cons work. Um, wireless Joy-Cons work as well, which is good. Cool. It's not in the greatest of condition, to be honest. Let's just make sure it picks up an internet connection. I won't bother connecting to it. Let's make sure it registers my 
internet or rather picks up my internet there we go okay so it picks up the coder cool that will do me and uh, finally let's just make sure it charges before we go any further so we'll make sure it charges both sides of the port okay that's picking up the charge of that side and he picked up the charge of that side. Excellent. So I don't think there's anything wrong with the switch apart from the SD card connector itself. Cool. That's fine. I'll pop them to one side. I'll be using them as test Joy-Cons. Okay. So I'm just going to get inside here. Then let's just see what's going on. Ah. Okay. Someone has been inside this. And it's taken one of the pins off. I'll show you that under the microscope in a minute. Let me just get inside and get the board out before I go any further, but I can see a damaged pin, which means it's likely just going to need a standard connector replacement, which is fine. I don't mind that. So there's the board out. I can pop everything else to one side, and then I'm going to pop under the microscope, and we'll take it from there. But before I do that, I am going to remove this thermal pasta. Mmm, lovely thermal pasta. Anyway, there we go. So I'll remove that just to make sure that I don't get it all over my hands. It's not exactly nice to get all over your hands and also on the table as well because then it ends up all over the screen. You've got to sit there and clean the screen and things like that. It's really, really annoying. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put this over the edge of the table just here and then I'm going to put the microscope there. And the reason for that is because on a connector, if I was to use hot air around here, I'm going to melt these two connectors here. So what we do is we use the hot air from underneath. Uh, because the board is so thin, it doesn't take long for the heat to transfer through and melt the solder on this side. So we heat up from underneath and then we can remove the connector safely without damaging any other connector. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Right, so I've got the board hanging over the edge of the table here and we can see that we've got the SD card connector. And as you can see on this pin just here, we've got no pin there. And that, I believe, is going to be one of the main data lines so basically without that pin there it's not going to connect to the sd card connector so what we need to do is we need to remove the existing connector and we need to replace it i'm not sure yet if the pad is gone we'll find that out when i remove it from the board but if the pad is gone then we're going to have to run a little jumper wire as well so the first thing i'll do is remove the emmc and the reason for that is because we're going to be using heat in that area and this contains all of the data and it is paired to the board. So basically, if this gets destroyed, then it's game over. The board is a brick. So remove that first before you do any kind of work in this area, just to make sure that we don't damage it. So the next thing I'll do is just take my hot air and I'll remove the nozzle from the hot air just so as we've got a bare nozzle and basically the reason for that is just to spread heat evenly and distribute it across the board properly the next thing I'll do is just heat up from the bottom of the board so I've got my hot air right now set at 440 degrees celsius at 40% airflow and um, that's pretty much my go-to temperature for most jobs to be honest but all I'm going to do is just heat up from the bottom of the board and then once the solder is molten, I'll be able to lift off this connector safely. And it shouldn't do any damage to any other connector. And the good thing is, it doesn't look like it's taken the trace with it. So it looks like this is just technician damage. Someone's just damaged this connector while, they, while they've been putting it back together by the look of it. Which is fine. I would be lying if I said that I'd never damage one of these connectors myself. I've definitely done it myself in the past. So next I'll just tin the pads there just to prep them for the new connector. So I'll just add some leaded solder. I use Kester 6040. A few people have asked me actually where I get the Kester from. I buy it from Amazon US. So I basically change my region to Amazon US and then just buy it 
from Amazon but set my address in the UK as a delivery address. Takes about a week, something like that. Not too bad. Okay, so just replace that solder with leaded solder. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up and just make sure that we've got a sufficient amount of solder on each pad. So I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol and a little paintbrush that I've trimmed down. Thanks to my mate Vince for showing me that little trick. So I've just trimmed it down just to make it a little bit more rigid and stop the bristles from falling out. My mate Vince gave me that idea. I saw it in one of his videos. I highly recommend you check him out. I think there's a link in my video descriptions. So we should just be able to drop a new connector on there now and call it good. So the way that I'm going to put a new connector on is exactly the same way as I took it off. And that's going to be to heat up from the bottom. So I'm going to put the connector in position and then I'm going to heat up from the bottom to flow it into place. So because I don't have any new connectors in stock, I'm going to take one from this donor board here. As you can see, it's a good connector. It's absolutely fine. So I'm going to remove it exactly the same way as I remove the one from the board I'm working on. So this is a donor board. You can buy them off AliExpress. I believe I've got some on the way, but basically I've got none in stock right now. So I need to harvest one from a donor. There we go. So I've got that connector off there. So I'll just bring this one back into view. Um, first and foremost, let's just add a little bit of flux. Don't need much. I'm going to melt that flux just so as it's spread nice and even. There we go. And then let's just pop that roughly in place. And I'm heating up from the bottom. And surface tension took that in. Beautiful. I do have a counterweight on the board just to stop it moving. Just in case you're wondering why the board is not moving anywhere. So what I'll do now is just press down on the connector itself. And then heat it up once more. Let that settle. That's just making sure that enough solder meets the pins and the board. And then once that's settled, I'm going to reflow it once more with some more flux, just to make sure that it pushes itself into place. And then let's flow it into place again. Surface tension should pull it back into line. It's not quite lined up right now. I shouldn't need to touch it. If I do it, it'll just be a slight tap. Okay. And I'm going to move the heat away from the board now and just let that settle down. And the board's going to be pretty hot, so I'm going to wait for it to cool down as well before I touch it. So obviously I don't want to burn my fingers, but more importantly, I need to clean the flux off. But I don't want to clean the flux off until it's a little bit cooler, just because I don't want to put cold, well, room temperature isopropyl alcohol on a 200 degrees Celsius board. That would be rather silly. Okay, you should have cooled down enough now. So as you can see, I mean, it's still fairly warm. The isopropyl alcohol isn't taking long to evaporate there. It's still fairly warm. We just don't want it to cause any kind of thermal shock or anything like that. Okay, so I'm just going to dry off this remaining isopropyl alcohol, just speed up the process a little bit with some warm air. So let's give this a visual inspection. So to do that, I'm going to tilt it on an angle. That looks pretty perfect to me. If I do say so myself, that looks absolutely spot on. 
All right, so all we need to do now is just reassemble this. So I'm going to get this thing reassembled enough just to test it. Unfortunately, because it's an SD card connector, I need to pretty much fully reassemble it to be able to test it, which is kind of annoying. Well, never mind. I could test it out the case with the test LCD and things, but I might as well just put it back together. It should be absolutely fine. It should work without a problem now. I'm not really worried about it not working. Generally, these things are fairly straightforward jobs. So I'll get everything reconnected. And obviously, I'll fast forward through most of this because it's boring. But I'll get everything reconnected up and ready for testing. And there we go. Right then, time for the moment of truth. So let's turn it on. So just to put it into context, I've explained what I'm doing on the video, which takes longer, and I've only been recording for 41 minutes and 57 seconds, so 42 minutes. Now let's just make sure everything still works. And it reads the game, so that should be absolutely fine. SD card, no, not SD card, Joy-Cons. There we go, both of those connect, absolutely fine. Let's get the moment of truth. And let's put the customer's SD card in there. There we go. I heard the noise. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. That's more like it. Restart. Let's go to system settings. Data management. Uh, micro SD card, 28.7 gigabytes. That's what I'm talking about. That is more like it. This job is done. There we go. This job is done, and the customer, I'm sure, is going to be more than happy with the end result. Nice, straightforward job. I don't think I've done one of these on a video before, so it's something a little bit different, I think. I could be wrong. But basically, the SD card connector, it looks like someone's been inside the console, to do something else. I can't see what else would have been done. The charging port looks factory and the solder joints around the main power management chips and things like that look factory as well. So I'm not sure what would have been done, but someone has taken it apart by the look of it and damaged the SD card connector. So basically by replacing that with one from a donor board, like I said, you can buy them new. You can get them off AliExpress, eBay, Amazon, that sort of thing. But by replacing it with one from a donor board, I've managed to get this console to accept a SD card again. And it picks up absolutely fine. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. I always enjoy reading people's comments. And if you want to organise your own repair, you can do so by getting in touch using the website address in the video description. You can head over to the website, book in the console, or you can get in touch using the contact page. Please don't contact me about self-help through my website that is a business website and i do get quite a lot of people who will send me a whatsapp on my business number or they will uh you know email me asking me for help to help them fix the console if you need to do that there'll be a link in the video description to discord that is the only place that i can help apart from on the youtube comments obviously anything business related is on the website and then everything youtube related is through either youtube or through discord so please, please, please don't get in touch if you're asking for self-help through email because it clogs up my email and stops me from being able to reply to customers about repairs. If you found this video useful, you're welcome to support me. There'll be a Patreon link in the video description. There'll be a channel join button just below the video, conveniently located just by the subscribe button. So if you're not subscribed already, please get subscribed. I would appreciate it. And don't forget to turn on the bell notifications as well. But there'll be a join button below the video where you can join up as a channel member. Or you can head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking your Amazon Prime account to Twitch. It's absolutely free if you've already got Prime. And then that way you can subscribe to my channel every month. And it gives me around about $2.50. But it doesn't cost you anything extra on top of your normal Amazon Prime. You can also donate directly to me. There'll be a link to PayPal and to my Square checkout page if you want to send a little donation. Uh, it does help out the channel, honestly, it really does. Uh, obviously, don't feel bad. I've had people say before, I'm sorry, I can't donate. It's fine, honestly. If you want to donate, then by all means donate. But if you don't, then just keep watching the videos. It all helps out and it all supports the channel. But that's going to be for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. 
And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.